Today we're eating real bacon for the very first time. I'll explain what I mean by real bacon a little later as we're tasting this, but I just wanted to show you slicing it and cooking it. When I sliced it, it was very, very hard and I, had, I trimmed the skin off because the skin is rock hard. This bacon has been in the fridge for many months, but the key is that it doesn't have to be in the fridge. And that's the difference between real bacon and uh, modern, the modern version of bacon we have. Good morning. Good morning. How long does it take to milk a goat? One goat? One goat. I mean, it depends on a lot of factors. My goats take maybe five minutes each to milk. I'm going fast. I'm just going, like today, I'm just, it's a Saturday. I'm just doing Saturday speed. It might be seven minutes or something. How long does it take to milk two goats from start to finish? From when you first wash your first thing mm -hmm. to when you filter, filter the your milk, milk and put it in the fridge? 20 minutes if no one's helping me. Hold on, let me finish. Can I have a little help? Can I squirt a little in there? Sure. There's not much milk in there. She's just about done. But that one has the most. This one? Mm -hmm. that. She knows she's done. That's that. why she probably don't let you. Go ahead. I'll hold her like. You have to do it at the beginning. You want to see a baby bird? Yeah. Okay, I'll pick you up. Okay. There's a whole, there's a whole bird. I thought there was a spider one. How many, How many babies are in there? Girls, you need to go do your chores. Okay, I hate those. Got a little extra? Yeah. I, I always have a little extra, so I just strain it and then put it in my morning smoothie. Can I eat some of this? It's not really cooked yet. Let me drain it and cook it a little better. So Bree tried the bacon. She said, this is terrible. She said, it's inedible. I was gonna film it, but she just grabbed some. She's like, oh, I wanna try it. And she says, it's totally inedible. It's disgusting. You can't eat it. And I was like, oh no. And that was really discouraging just because I was like, oh no. It's all ruined. But I haven't tried it yet, so I'm about to try it. Definitely a little bit too salty. Well, that's, that's, I knew that before we even tasted it. Grace, what do you think? It's good. Is it good? Really? Yeah. Justice, what do you think? How does it taste? Good. Okay, I'm gonna try a little piece and see what I think. It's actually surprisingly good, I think. I'm trying to, I need to talk to Brie again to see what she was talking about. It may be she had It's a little like an off flavor. Hmm. From this tastes like freezer burn, but it's not been frozen. I think it's from the fridge out there. So this is real bacon because it's truly preserved. Like we can take it and just hang it up in in any semi cool environment, and it'll last for a long time. Now the flavor we're getting mixed reviews in the flavor, and there's a little kind of off stale taste. But I didn't taste it in the thinner, crisper pieces at all. I tasted it on the, um, on just the upper, the upper layer that was on the outside where the fat was. 
So we'll see. I'm not exactly. It's, I don't feel like this is a roaring success. But then on the other hand, if you if you look at it from a survival situation and all the freezers shut down, that's all the meat we're gonna have is those hams that are out there and the bacon. And I think it, if that if it came to that, it would be fresh meat and that salted meat. I think we'd probably savor it and the fat. I'm gonna try it again. That other piece was so salty. Mm. Salty. That's the problem you have with it, is it's too salty. Yeah. Now that piece is perfect. Can I try? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was the piece you got earlier too fat? Too thick? No, it was. Oh, yeah, I had a piece. There is this weird flavor to it. I know. What is that? It's from the fridge. I think it's like air. stale fridge. It's, it's not a. Yeah. It's we just get right up to. I'm going to that. That's too bad. I'm really disappointed about that bacon. I know it's my first time, and I'm just thinking what may have gone wrong. And I think, honestly, the saltiness, that's just what you can deal with when you're making your own bacon. I probably over-salted it. But we could deal with that, but the off flavor is what really bothers me. My only thoughts on fixing it are, if I think if I hang it out for a year or two, that may sound gross, but it won't go bad, um, or shouldn't go bad that it might lose that or lose some of it. Hopefully next time we can do better. What happened out here? What, what happened where? The, it's weedy. Yeah, I know, man. It rained for like a week straight, so this is what you get. And we haven't been out here. We've been really busy, too busy for being farmers. That's okay though, I think we'll get it whipped into shape. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. it's not terrible, That's but there's meal. patches like this is That's just overgrown. Yeah, but we've harvested pretty much everything from it. I mean, that's why I haven't been paying it much attention because I knew we were basically yeah. done with it. And we're about to tarp these beds. Yeah, these three beds, uh, even four beds eventually, this will all be tarped. Actually, all this because the onions are about to get harvested too. This broccoli is amazing because all the ones that we had already harvested are sending off so many side shoots. I've just probably picked about 20, 30 pounds of just side shoots which is really encouraging to me because when we had our first big harvest or like our main harvest, I was like, is this all? And now I'm realizing, no, it's not. So hopefully if we get our broccoli in the ground earlier next year, we will be able to benefit more from these side shoots. Cause what I'm finding is that the side shoots aren't even turning green. They're just turning yellow and bolting because of the heat. And uh, so I'm just picking them really small, even though they're not green. Cause I mean, they're still edible. Look, I'll show you, I'll show you an example. They all look like this. And um, like a week ago, the side shoots were like really nice dark green. So I think it's just the heat. Yes, buddy. Can I pick an onion? You can pick one onion. Like a, like the bottom too? Yeah. Pick a nice big one. The biggest one you can find. I know where the biggest. Ah. Whoa, look. Let me see, gorgeous! Huh. Look how long this one is! Oh yeah, beautiful onion. The really cool thing about the side shoots is if you pick all the way down, and then just, I know you can eat the leaves, but anyway, for freezing, and then you just have this really nice spear of broccoli. The broccoli variety is called Castle Dome, and we're really quite happy with it. It's been very productive even though it's it's been warmer weather and the side shoots are just really, make it very, very productive. This cabbage is doing so well, and I'm really excited about it. These cabbage heads look even better than they did last year, and we got a lot of cabbage last year, but just look at these. Most of this will go into sauerkraut. Did you pick one too? Don't pick any more onions, okay? That one's not big enough yet. I want. Okay, good. Good job though, picking one. These are the best onions we've ever grown. Yep, because we've kept them weeded until today. <laughs> oh, I don't have time to weed onions right now. I wish I did, actually. But it's 4th of July. We've got plans at the river. The river is calling our name, so I'm just trying to get this broccoli harvested, get the food made, and get to the river today. Look at these tomatoes. They're doing so, so well. And they're already half, more than halfway up to the top of this eight foot trellis. Some nice fruit coming on, on almost all of these larger plants. The corn's looking good. We haven't yet mulched this with wood chips. 
but we'll get to that soon. The beans are looking amazing. And we're not harvesting any beans yet, but we will be quite soon. Here's a big June beetle. I'm gonna kill our June bug. There's a potato. That's fun. I love growing potatoes. Me too. You know, did you know that if you eat um, potatoes, you, you'll get healthy and strong? You'll get healthy and strong if you eat potatoes? From a, from a garden. Oh, whoa. Wow, this is a lot of potatoes. Ooh, nice. All right, let's bring, oh, don't drop them. Let's bring them down to the camper. It's a pretty nice bag of potatoes from just a few minutes of digging. And that should do us for the next couple weeks, depending on what we eat and how often we eat them. Dun, dun, da, da. Potatoes, Mama. He wants to show you these potatoes. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Oh. Whoa. 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 I think they're the best ones we've ever grown because they don't have all those nooks and crannies in them. Yeah. Well, we picked a few small ones. They're Kennebec. One harvest we did not show you was all of these cucumbers are coming in, and these are pickling cucumbers. But y'all, pickling cucumbers doesn't mean you can only use them for pickling. You can use them for whatever you want. They're just a shorter, a little bit fatter um, variety, and they are delicious. So anyway, everything I am bringing for this little 4th of July river time is from the farm. Everything I'm bringing, even the herbs, the onions, every bit. And that is such a big deal. I don't know that we've ever um, been at this point on our farm where even like the flavorings were from our farm. I think this is the most successful garden we've had yet. Well, we'll see, but it is so far, yeah. <laughs> Everything that's coming is from our place except for the bacon. Except the bacon. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. Because I put bacon in my broccoli salad. Oh, it's a little bit heartbreaking not to be like, even the bacon is from our farm. But it could have been from our farm. If you had got it. And it will be in the future. Yeah, I mean, we still have a bunch of pork belly up in the other freezer, but it doesn't work the same as bacon in a, in a salad. I'm it's not the same thing. Oh, what did you show everyone? What you made? I made flags. Flags for the 4th of July. What are you planning to do with those flags? Give them out? Yep. Sell them, actually. I sell want, them. I want some. We should tell, we should make a video sometime about their, the girls just did a project and they raised um, hatch chicks out to starter pullets, like so, poop ready pullets, and sold them for $15 If piece. you want to buy one, you better buy one soon because we only have two left. Yeah, and so. they, um, they made about $9 per chicken and they sold 12 chickens. And now we have a bunch of money, me and Grace. I did most of the work. They had to pay for the chicks, pay for the feed. They didn't have to pay for the electricity or the water, but everything else. And they made $9 a chicken. How much are you selling it for? $15 a piece. They're eight weeks old. They're coop ready, fully feathered chicks. Pull it, starter pull it. And it there's seems only two like left. people are really happy to pay that for them. Yeah, I mean, I think we could have even charged 20, but I felt, I just didn't feel like 20 was fair, even though we could have gotten it. Because it cuts out the risk and the hard work of getting chicks. Yeah, it cuts out the risk and all of the early hard work. It's a lot harder. Ba raising baby chicks is harder than raising adult chickens, for sure. Never seen so many flies. Get out of your poop. She's hanging out in this back corner of the pasture where it's most shady and there's a muddy spot for her to lay down or a dirt spot. And she's been hanging out there so much there's poop back there. So she's as dirty as she's been for all the months that we've been rotating her. She's been completely clean. I may rope off this corner because she's got plenty of other shady spots she can lay. She can come lay over here under these trees and just try to spread that impact out a little bit and make her stay a little cleaner, especially as we're looking towards milking soon. But anyway, we're just checking her because we're gonna be gone for the day. So I'm just checking her pins to see how sunken they are. And they're not, when, when she's about to calf, this area right here between her tail and what's this bone called? You can stick your hand down in it. So as you can see, I can't stick my hand down in it. And that'll happen, hey girl, that'll happen right before she calves. 
And the reason that sinks down is because it loosens everything up for her to be able to get a baby out. One of our friends who has cows, one day I was out with him, and he said, he just was looking at his cows, he said, that cow's going to have its baby tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, how do you know that? He just said, I know, just know. Her udder is filling up and her backside is getting very loose and jiggly. But those things can happen way before the baby actually comes. The surefire way to tell that it's going to happen imminently is by checking these ligaments right here. And they're still, they're sinking, but they're not sunk yet. All mamas deserve a little respect, don't they? <laughs> yeah. All mamas deserve a little respect. A oh, lot of by the way, check out our new t-shirt. Oh yeah. Mama, tough as nails, sweet, sweet as, as honey. honey. And we have all sorts of colors and a few different styles. So we'll link that right below this video where you can buy one. And we have two more colors co coming in the mail, hopefully in about a week so we can show them off. Yeah, we have a couple more sample shirts coming to show you guys. I like mine, it's very soft. Whew, we have busted it this morning so that we can get out the door. And that's just what it's like, even on a holiday. We're taking the whole afternoon off to play and swim in the river and eat good food and celebrate July 4th, celebrate our country's independence. But man, I'm ready to just go play. I've been busting it all morning since I caught up. We're putting on sunscreen. We're about to head to the river. I want to show them the sunscreen though. This all good sunscreen, if you're looking for like a sunscreen that doesn't have all of the um, bad chemicals in it that are really bad for your body and is also really bad for the environment and for the reefs. I love this brand. All good. I'll link it below. Um, I'll send you, I'll give you an Amazon link for it. This stuff is awesome. The only thing, the only thing you may not like about it is you do have to rub it in and it does take some rubbing, but that's how any like sunscreen that isn't going to give you cancer is going to work out. I really like this one. Guys, it's been another great day in the homestead. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.